All right, bitch, sing a jingle. Spotlight session with T.S. Madison, baby. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> All right, bitch, on with the show. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, T.S. Madison, and welcome to another Spotlight session with none other than me, the T.S. Now, sometimes people ask, what does T.S. mean, honey? We're definitely going to find that out tonight, especially with my guest who you guys know as your favorite wonder twins honey jada and brandon oh my god i'm so excited for tonight oh my god you guys have no idea how excited i am if you could only see up under this desk how excited i, I am <laughs> They call me off guard. Oh my god, they call me off guard. Yeah, That's yeah. So I, I'm in between two beautifully chocolate, Ooh. sexy twins. Ooh. And if you haven't seen these twin story, uh, you gotta visit uh, Barcroft. Is it Barcroft TV? Barcroft TV. Barcroft TV, so that you guys can, you know, get deep in on the story. I know who they are. If you don't, you will definitely. Learn tonight here on a spotlight session with T.S. Madison. Now listen, Jada and Brandon. What's up? What's up, baby? I watched your story on the Barcroft TV thing, and I was I was I was sitting there mesmerized that I was looking at you both. You both are very beautiful in person. You beautiful people, okay. beautiful spirit, beautiful personalities, and you know you're a trans woman like myself, mm -hmm. and you are a how openly, do you how do you identify to openly gay male openly gay male so you do identify as a gay man yes ma'am okay and you identify as a trans woman am That's i correct? correct all right so before we even get deep down into the whole gist of all the situations honey making these titties bounce like this <laughs> all right oh well wait a minute hold on i, I, I forgot oh, wait, wait. i forgot baby it's, it's, it's a challenge it's a challenge it's a challenge, it's a challenge. It's a okay so what are the proper pronouns to use when i'm when when one is addressing you, Jada. Hershey, like Hershey chocolate. Hershey, what's gay? <laughs> wait, wait. Hershey, Hershey, Hershey and she. like chocolate. Uh, Hershey, like uh, okay. And what are the proper pronouns to use when we're when we are addressing you? Besides your highness, I'll just say you know, man. Okay, you know, you, he him. He him. Uh, okay. Nothing, nothing too much. Oh, okay, nothing, nothing too, too much. much. And you guys are twins. Yes, yes, we are identical twins. Identical twins. You started out, you both started out, and I'm being very res respectful here. Mm -hmm. Sister, go ahead. Okay, you both started out as twin boys. Correct. Yes. We and are. then one of you decided that, listen, I'm tired of looking at your motherfucking face, bitch, because I see one. my face. It was that and one. And I want to be a fucking woman. Let's we'll see. <laughs> and you just became a woman. That's correct. You just, you... So your the inner you said I want to be she her and hers right and the inner you said I'm gonna just keep it the way it was you just gonna keep I'm all gonna just keep it the way it was yeah Jade and I we are 87 minutes apart so we we are already a little different yeah we're 87 minutes apart um all my mother kids were natural and she Wait, was you the have only more, one there's more of you yes yeah. there's seven of us oh my God where y'all from New no, Orleans hey. hey. straight out the 504 baby hey. you already hey. got yeah. Wait a minute, Baby, listen, I was so excited about tonight because y'all have too. brought that no that Nola bounce, that Nola energy. Oh, absolutely. And baby. I love Nola. I love it. Real. I love it. I love it because it's so much culture, so much history. So much magic in the yes. air down there. Yes, I can honestly say that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what magic, honey? The, the magic is in the air. Yeah. yeah. No, New Orleans definitely is a lot, whole lot of magic, a whole lot of voodoo, a whole <laughs> lot, lot of great spirits, a whole lot of good everything. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you, you better be Marie, Marie Laveau. Yeah, my Chateau. You know? <laughs> so I want to dig deep in and I want to talk to. You first. Okay. I'm ready. Tell her the truth now. Well, Brandon, listen. <laughs> was it difficult for you? Because you said that you wanted to keep everything, like, intact. You wanted mm -hmm. to keep everything the way it was, you know. Mm -hmm. 
was it difficult for you to see yourself mm -hmm. transitioning? Because that's just, you was really looking at yourself. Yeah. Right. Um, I think to answer the question, I think it wasn't. I, you know, we grew up in New Orleans, mm -hmm. so everybody who identified as transgender, in my idea, really wasn't transgender. So, so what are you saying? They were, they just, I they guess, were clocky or something like they, that. They were clocky, and also they just were, they just didn't appear as a transgender woman. They just appeared as a male with boy clothing on. So, but when uh, Jada started to transition, I was like, what are you going to transition into? Because I hope you don't want to be like those people. <laughs> but, but I was confused on so what the representation was. So basically, you saw bricks, is what you were saying. Yeah, I saw uh, bricks, like hammers, Why nails, are you making that voice? Well, I mean, you, just being honest here. The tables, you know, you saw cedar rolls and cabinets. Okay. But, <laughs> but, but also, when she started to transition, I was like, you know what? She, and she was always, to me in my eyes, was misunderstood because, you know, people would tease her and stuff like that. And also, people would tease me, but Jada was, like, always helping up for me, like, yeah, you better leave my twin alone. You better not tell my twin nothing. And I always was, like, quiet. Mm -hmm. So when she transitioned, it's like, it made me, like, the roles reversed. But you was lit you, you you get up every morning, and you not only see a reflection of yourself in the mirror, mm -hmm. but you see a reflection of your, your physical being yeah. every day. Yeah, and it was pretty cool, like, you know, after time, I was like, you know what, I feel like we actually transition together you oh, know what I mean good. because I feel like as though like she became happier and then I was able as you seen on the documentary was the first time I was able to ever talk about my sexuality <laughs> and I never like talked about it so people wait a minute so the people thought you was the train I don't know if they thought that I was the train but people what did they think that both of y'all was the train no, well, I was never the train probably me <laughs> <laughs> I was never no, the train. I was the main show. I never just the really train. knew about my sexuality. You know what I mean? I dated women when I was in New Orleans. So when I moved here, I didn't, you know, started dating guys. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I never talked about That's it. That's the Atlanta at all. spell, darling. No, so Wait. it was just my first time. This is a lot, and I have so many questions in just the little answer that you gave here. Okay. So I want to dissect this. You were watching yourself transition over here mm -hmm. as to becoming a woman. You were were you in, in any space um, unaware of your, your identity as, as well? Were you trying to find your identity? I was trying to find my identity as well. And so you were, you at the time, you were still under the straight umbrella. Am I um, it was like a little bit, yeah, afterwards. <laughs> I was dating women and men at the same time. So you were the trade, yeah, basically. No, but it wasn't like, it wasn't no bisexual or crazy thing going on. It was like, I stopped dating girls and then I met this guy and then him and I hit it off. But we didn't have sex. We just hit it off and then I had y'all go with the y'all ain't having sex. We huh? did it. We did it. You do know that I'm oral, not a Christian. I'm you not do a know Christian that oral boy. is still sex. I know it is. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm a Christian or anything, but I waited off and then you know I was like, you know what? I was interested in this guy. So that's when I started dating guys. And that's what made you be solid in your sexuality, your first Believe kid, it or not. Your I, first male experience. Believe it or not, it was a kiss. I had a kid, a kiss. I was dating this guy from New Orleans. He was living here, and him and I was on the movies. We went out, and then name. afterwards he left. He was like, "You gonna give me a kiss?" And I was like, "No," but then he was like, "You not?" And then I did. And then on my way home, I was like, "Nigga, you gay." What? I was like, you said it to yourself. Yes, I was like, "Nigga, you is gay." Did it make your penis erect? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just was like, nigga, you gay. You know, like, you have a conversation with yourself. You was like, yeah, you for real, you gay. So the kiss is what solidified yes. what you're I really, saying. Yes, I honestly feel like the kiss. Well, was, was it the kiss and the erection? It was both. It was, a, <laughs> it was the combo. Oh. It was the butch queen combination. <laughs> <laughs> it was the butch queen combo. So, yes. The number six. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no peas, no carrots. But, yeah, so that she was. She falling out work. Yeah. Like, oh, you oh, falling out? Wait. So it was the kiss, the erection, and well, then after that, the woman that you were dealing with at the time, did you say no, no I had, more? I had already said stop dealing well, with her. Well, did you call her and tell her it's definitely no more <laughs> after this? You told her it was the number six? No, I, was, I told her it was the number six. No peace, no carrots. <laughs> and that was it. So this happened a year after she transitioned. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, in that so in that 365 days period, you were still... Yes. 
straight. Well, I wouldn't say straight. I just wasn't experimenting. I just was, he was truly um, finding out who I was as a person. Was, and I feel like everyone should take that time. So now, I really now you, didn't now know. you guys see how I'm trying to corner him into using the word straight. No, because right? I'm not. Right. I would he never was use the word straight. And dabbling no, and dabbling I, I would and doing use it. the word straight because to me, straight is too boring. Because you have to right. walk straight. You have to act straight. You can't do anything that's feminine. I feel like that's no fun. I feel My like God. being gay is it's fun. It's My a, God. And I don't care about all the other things that go with it. My I, God. Enjoy, I really enjoy being a gay black man. Yes. And I'm successful. And I'm attractive. Yes, you and are. I'm all those yes. things. And you can all be those, those things. things being gay, overly gay. Oh so my I God. represent for all the overly gay males out there. Ooh. Okay. That used to have a little little fish pudding on the yeah. side. <laughs> a, a little Kool-Aid. A little Kool-Aid. Yeah. Little, you know, you had a little fish pudding. You had a little tuna fish sandwich on the side. Ah, oh, ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Y'all going to be falling out. <laughs> so... You you watch your sister transition into mm -hmm. your sister. Uh huh. Sister. Then you looking at like because you're identical twins, mm -hmm. and then it's just like, did you feel, did you feel like that you had lost a piece of yourself, or did you, or you gained? I honestly did feel like I lost a piece of myself because I was like, oh my god, we're not gonna have fun anymore. We're not gonna be dressed <laughs> like anymore. Like we're not gonna be able to do uh, twin stuff, and we have like a lot of twin stuff things we do. And I was like, we're not gonna be able to do any of the, the you know, all those things because you're transitioning. But then, well, well, after she transitioned, I was like, you know what? We still can do those things. We actually have more fun. You know what I okay. mean? Okay. So it's just like it's just like one of those things that I just second guess. I was like, we're not gonna have that much fun. So before before this, you guys were dressing like all the time. Y'all were fooling. Wait, wait a minute. I, wait, I didn't ask the question that I wanted to ask. Yes. Were y'all fooling girls together? Um. I ain't never really date no women like that. No I know, women. but it's just that tricking a no, girl. You know how you trick a ever, girl. Did we ever really trick? No, not really. We never really trick anybody because people always knew like the, the different, different personality. The personality was like we looked at alike, but the personality well, we was different always people. different. So it's like we couldn't really be each other because people could kind of like tell us tell us apart. I know, which is uh, kind of crazy, kind of odd. Now we we can't sound alike on the phone. <laughs> no, and uh, her, her iPhone. I can unlock her iPhone. Oh yeah, he can't unlock my iPhone. Now. Yeah, I can do that. You can do it at this moment. Yeah, now. yeah. I can unlock her iPhone with my face and her face. It's crazy. Do we look alike? Yes. Oh well, hopefully you, it doesn't work. Listen, right. but you look alike. But you are. I see a beautiful wow. chocolate woman, and I see a very handsome man. Well, I do. You. you know, and for me. I, these questions are coming because I didn't write any any questions down because I wanted to I wanted to feel y'all spirit out or whatever and I loved it like when we especially y'all brought me some stuff but we'll, we'll get into that later yeah, on in the segment. Right. But I just wanted to know because you first because you know you stayed the same yes. and she <laughs> she sprouted. Yes, I did. I kept you know what I just stayed true to who I am. A lot of people ask me like doing interviews and stuff like that. They always ask you. Uh, would you transition? I always say no. That was that was her thing. Yeah, I don't. I, listen to me. I'm a very good absorber of energy, and mm -hmm. I don't. I don't absorb any any wanting to be a female energy from yes. you at all. Okay, thank you. I don't absorb that from you. Her, her thank you. She's definitely a woman. <laughs> thank you. This is a woman. Not, not yes, thank you. But oh, yeah, wait. so I always tell her that's her thing, and you know what? It was easy to embrace her, and I meet a lot of. Uh, people in the LGBT community. And I feel like now since the documentary came out uh -huh. and people was able to understand me, I understand people more and I embraced other people. Mm -hmm. So people, once the documentary came out, people written me all the way from uh, Africa or London or telling me about a little story about how their family didn't accept them. And I was like, you know, well, we grew up in New Orleans and we come from a really great family and a respectable family. So if we're going to do anything, we're always going to do it out of respect. And you have to respect us because we only telling our truth. Right. And we also being right. respectful. Right. So, you know, we're not disrespecting anyone, trying to... Uh, You're like just doing say, you. Yeah, the narrative, drive the narrative. We're just being who we are and telling our story while doing it. All right, well, let me slide over here to your sister. Sister, which is your sister and my sister, too. Okay. Sister. Sister, at what point did you decide in yourself, like, I'm tired of looking at this nigga over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so, uh, basically, <laughs> he falling out of I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I ain't I'm tired of around. looking at this nigga <laughs> over here. Okay. So, I actually wanted to transition when I was, like, 14, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And as you know, like, this was after Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. And so, times were a little different. You know, the word transgender wasn't a word back in Girl, the Girl, what was it? Drag Let's, queen. Drag queen. Transvestite. Transvestite tranny. Transvaginal mesh. Ooh, you know I say that all the time, Basha. 
Transmission. Trans something. Honey. That's what the TS means, bitch. All of those things. Girl. Tropical storm. Tropical storm. <laughs> Transmission fluid. What? Talking shit. shit. You know, too much stuff. Okay. Titty slang. Like it. Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. Ain't no D at the end. Just TS. All right. Ah. <laughs> All right, it comes with a package. It does. With, with, with a number seven. seven. <laughs> a number seven bag. The film No carrots, no peas. <laughs> with carrots with and peas. peas. <laughs> with carrots and peas. <laughs> so you just said at 14, and you said, fuck it. I'm just going to go ahead on and be exactly who I am on the inside. I'm going to display this. I'm going to just do this on the outside. Who was the first person that you told besides yourself? Because the first person that you have a conversation with <laughs> in transitioning, in, in trying to figure out, you know, who you are, what you are. It's yourself. Right. Who was the first person outside of yourself? My was, mom. Oh, it wasn't him. No. No, it wasn't. It was a surprise. Because I actually uh, put on transitioning for eight years. So from 14, 15, all the way to 24, I put it off. And so I only had told, uh, spoken to my mom about it. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of told her how I felt. And, and at that point, I had watched this uh, movie back in the days. It was called A Girl Like Me. I don't know if you remember that. Um, it was on Lifetime, and it was about the transgender girl that got killed in the bathroom. She was dating a guy in college, and he found out she was trans when he peeked over the... Um... I'm going to have to look that up. It's, oh, yeah. Oliver, please make sure that we uh, look that up, a girl like me. Because for me, I, I used to wa I watch this uh, thing with Calpurnia Adams called Soldier's Girl. You remember okay. that? Uh-huh. When, the, when his, the guy was in the military, mm -hmm. and he was killed by somebody... Yeah. Yeah, so I watched that. Like, that was one of my first trans movies that I... No, no, one of my first trans movies that mm -hmm. I watched was... Why are there heartaches? Why are there tears? <laughs> crying Game. The Crying Game. I never saw that one. Oh. <clears throat> I'll have to look that up. Yes. I'm going to have to look that up. Y'all, how old are you, may I ask? I'm 29. You're 29? No, well, I'm actually 21. 21. With nine, nine years, years of experience. experience cause <laughs> Well, that's wrong. It's 21 with eight years of experience. <laughs> okay, we'll so, be 30 this so year. we have the girls in the twi We have the, the people in the in the 20s. Right. I'm 43. Oh, so you look good, sister. Thank you, baby. Yeah. So listen, <laughs> <laughs> you, bitch, you're beautiful. You know, I don't tell you both of y'all, but I watched the crying game. Was the first thing I had ever seen. Mm -hmm. Don't want no more <laughs> of the crying game. And it blew me away. It was Forrest Whitaker mm -hmm. and the person that played uh, uh, in the movie uh, Stargate. Okay. What's that person's name, Oliver? Tell me the name. And he, he, I, I, I want to make sure I say the correct pronouns. Okay. Well, shit, bitch. I'm talking about it before all these pronouns shit. Right. He was androgynous, right. and mm -hmm. I thought that it, he was a woman. woman. Mm -hmm. And it just blew me away because there was a scene in The Crying Game yeah. where... The one that looks like a woman. <laughs> That's funny. Stephen Ray, Miranda Richardson, Jay Davidson, Agent Murder, go to the cast and look at the people's face. It'll tell you. He looked like a woman. And I don't know if that's... Because he's played in other movies, too. <laughs> like, girl, he... It, it fucked me up because there was a scene where they were kissing. Mm -hmm. And then she was in the... I lied. She was in the bathroom mm -hmm. and she disrobed. Mm -hmm. And when the when the when the robe dropped down to the floor, I saw dick and nuts. Mm -hmm. And the the, and the guy is. the guy was like, "Well, it really wasn't no boobs, you know." It was like, "Right, Oliver, you ain't found it yet." Stephen Rea. Uh huh. It, the boot, the little, it had little like moan titties. Oh, so oh. she had the, she had a three piece, is what you are saying? Well, she had a two and a half piece, okay. you know, wasn't it? It's like little moan missile, moan little nipple, <laughs> little water balloon, little water, little little nuggets, little kumquats, little Come, you know. I know what they look like. We all had them. Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> so and and the guy was looked up, was like, <gasps> and then and he started shot. throwing up and all this stuff in throwing the room, up. and he punched her. Oh no! And that was my first time really having a having my because everything else before that was drag. Right, right. of course, right. It was but drag. Yeah, it was your first time. Ex so that was my first time actually witnessing a trans experience and I was mm -hmm. like <gasps> confirmation yes confirmation oh, what, yeah, year did, confirmation. what year did crying game come out Oliver? Uh, yeah 92 like 92 I was uh I was yes two. in 92 I was f <laughs> do 2020 minus 92 
Wait a minute. How old was I? I'm playing with you. I was not 30 in 1992, bitch. I think I was 2020 minus 1992 is what? 28. I wasn't 28. So let's do 77, 92. 92 minus 77. I was 15. Okay. So we were around the same age. Yeah. I started transitioning around 17-ish, 18-ish in that area. Okay. A different era. Yes. Right. That shit was like... Uh, and then you said you're from Miami. Yeah, oh, girl, oh, child, we're going to get deep in that. Okay. <laughs> that shit was like... That was my right. first time. Like, oh, my God. Don't want no... And it, it stuck <laughs> so deep in me that, that, that boy George was singing that. Don't want no more... Of the crying game. game. I felt so connected, connected. to that, that movie. Was your, that was your confirmation. The of, confirmation. Right. I felt such a connection because my connections prior to that was RuPaul. Well, Whoa. RuPaul was RuPaul my connection. Connect, I don't know who it was. I can understand. Who was Let me say something. So I can understand the connection between RuPaul and um, what a, the your, the first representation of RuPaul because I believe that RuPaul was everybody's first representation. Yeah. And then I can understand the crying game because that was your confirmation because you were, it was a different era. Mm. Let me just say that. And then, so the movie that I was talking about was in a younger era. You know what I mean? I was almost from, I was much younger than you. And this was in 2015. So the evolution of confirmation was different. For everybody. So it was just, it was just like, boom. So I understand exactly what you're saying. You saw a trans girl. And you, you felt connected. connected. Like, you felt like, wow. And this is why I tell people, mm-hmm. you know, when they sit back and they talk stuff, they talk shit about trans and LBGT and gay stuff, and how I don't want my kids watching TV. Sis. There's a child or a, a, a person out there that, that ain't connected. Right. right. They haven't had identified yet. They can't. You, right. you, you, they trying to, con- you don't see it at the house. Because you know mom and daddy is mom and daddy. Right. Right. I don't want to be connected to that shit. I think everybody have a different upbringing, too. I think a lot of people are smothering their children with not allowing them to just be free. And I'm not saying that everybody is LGBT. I'm just saying that the people don't allow their children to be great, allow their children to explore, allow their children to be expressive. Yes, you have to be able to... You gotta be able to know to see something and know that if you don't like it. Right, right. That's I mean, that's like, the only way you really know. That's the only way you know. That's like saying, like, if I go into a restaurant, I feel like I like my eggs over medium. So I feel like that's something I oh, already you like know. Over medium yes, and I, and I like my steaks medium well. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's something I know that I like. How do you like your steaks? Um, raw. Well, <laughs> long <laughs> and raw. <laughs> well, covered. <laughs> Covered. <laughs> that was oh my god! You know, yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all like, know I'm a man. Yeah, just, I just feel like you gotta know what you want. And as a kid, you can identify like I know what I want. You know yeah. What I'm I mean, I, I think like... people force people to do things because I, I people don't know this, but I used to play basketball. Growing up, I used to be. Singing. Well, you, you, you guys are both tall. Yeah, I used to be. Well, basketball. no, that's the thing. We wasn't always. We tall. wasn't always tall. We always was the shortest in school. So <laughs> he was like five four, five five. Yeah, like in, the, in eleventh grade, we were five five. So we so y'all were like in my, y'all were in my range. Yeah, of we just yeah. sprouted out. But to be honest, Jada was in more uh, championships than I was growing up in playing football play. and basketball. I, I so you could, I play play play. Don't tell these people I used to play football. Football and basketball. Don't tell these people I used to play football. No football, football and basketball. Okay, bro. Make sure you don't take that off, okay? Yeah. I said football. We're gonna and basketball. say beep on that, Oliver. Yeah. We're gonna beep that. But this is the thing. I get I get your I get it. So you told your mom you watched the movie. And so did you tell her was it, it was the movie? I did. I said so when I called her, I said, I wanna tell you something. And then she was like, what? I was like, I want to be a girl, but don't tell nobody. And I called her on the phone. She was like, what? And I was like, I want to be a girl. And she was like, how this going to happen? And so it, the conversation died, of course, in the house. The conversation died. But what uh, really brought back up the conversation, um, just moving on, I kind of battled with it for eight years. I'm like, do I want to transition? I'm just kind of scared. I don't know how the world going to perceive me. And then uh, when I got to Atlanta, I got really depressed. I moved from New Orleans to Atlanta. I got so depressed and... I don't know if you want to touch bases in that right yeah, now. Yeah, we're going to do all of it. Okay, but I just got really, really, really depressed, and I couldn't take it no more. I was, like, sleeping in a closet. I just didn't want to face the world at some point. And, and, okay. So you were battling with, with, with wanting to transition. 
you moved from New Orleans to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Was this both of you together? Well, okay. it's so funny. I moved to uh, New Orleans to Atlanta in 2011, so before her. So, so you were here before she came. Yeah. Um, and you hadn't transitioned yet. I no. didn't. Oh, so yeah. this is where we get to the meat and the, the potatoes. <laughs> So when you came here, you had already began your transition. No, no, it's so well. It's the story. She came as a pre-transition, and then um, I was walking to the mailbox, and I was like, "Oh, hey, there's a box said. coming to my house with her with her name on it." I was like, "What is it?" And it was a book about transitioning, and I was like, "Well, why would you have a book about transitioning?" And and then she explained. One of our other uh, peers from New Orleans was actually transitioning too. So she was like, oh, this, you know, this person told me about the book. And, and it was crazy because we didn't speak for like four months after that. So we were just like, what? You want to like do, you know, you want to do this? So we kind of had like a phase. It made you mad? Yes, because I was ignorant. I didn't understand. And you didn't speak to your sister? No, and we stood in a studio apartment. And we would walk past each other like every day. You can take. <laughs> no, it was like a really emotional moment because, you know, you have to be a twin to understand. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, uh -huh, I felt as though that you were taking who you were and changing who is absolutely because, who And that's why I opened up the conversation with yeah. how did it feel with you looking at yourself? Because this is, this, is yeah. uh, this is a replica of you. Right. You looking at yourself change and you want to stay the same. Yes. So you were angry. At yes, first. At first, right. Because you you were angry because, to be honest with you, you were in a selfish place. Right? Yes. Speak. <laughs> you were in a selfish place. And this is a lot of people out there that are watching don't want their children to transition or don't want their children to be gay right. or don't want their children to live in their truth because of their own Self selfish selfery. ways, their yes. own selfish reasons. Mm -hmm. And that comes from one, how have you ever? I'm gonna be real candid because this is my show, so I'm gonna be yeah. candid. Yeah. Go ahead. How have you? How have you ever treated a punk before? All right. How have I? Would you, oh, I always give people the utmost respect. But this is what I say to parents. Oh, you don't want your kids to be a certain type of way because the way you done treated a gay, mm -hmm. the way you done treated a trans, the way you done, right. can you know how people do that because you right. one of those malicious ass motherfucking right. people that do do wrong to, to the girls or whatever, or, and then when it knocks on your front door, you right. get upset. Yes, that's always. But it's a, but you were in a selfish place and you were angry with your sister and y'all were living in a studio apartment, mm -hmm. didn't speak. Yeah, <laughs> you couldn't take. Yeah, I didn't speak. And you was over there moaning. <laughs> No, so, so I can kind of basically, so what happened, so when I moved from New Orleans, I was more androgynous. And so from androgynous, I just knew that wasn't the final step. And so we was living in a studio apartment, and then I was going to therapy with my mom, but he didn't know I was going to therapy with my mom. And so from therapy, um, that's when I kind of told, that's when he found out about it, and then I went to go get my first, you know, which is a hormone, and then you could, you know, uh, at that point. And then you started softening up. And, and turning into the conch. And the, the, the fish, and, and honey. And turning it. Yes. And, and you can take it. Yes. <laughs> you know, and do what? Do you that. Know? <laughs> but he just went to, you know, I just went to moan and just kind of basically uh, finding myself. I did go through trials and tribulations and discrimination and losing jobs and stuff like that. So it wasn't the easiest. Yeah. Oh, oh listen, you preaching to the choir, girl. Okay. Uh, that's uh. how I turned into a hoe, but that's another story. <laughs> but the thing about it is, you, you, Here's what here's what I'm always arguing mm -hmm. and debating with with hetero. Mm -hmm. hetero, <laughs> hetero. Like, I'm like, girl, the bro, streets. You hetero black. I mean, okay. let me just keep it two thousand. <laughs> right. You expect opposition from outside. Right. Right. You don't want to be inside and receiving the same opposition. You want to be able to find refuge in your own place. Absolutely. And you being angry with her mm -hmm. was not providing her the well, refuge. I think only because I felt like I was ignorant. And like I said, I grew up in New Orleans, and the representation that I thought that she was aiming for or was clock monkeys. Like, was was clock monkeys. Right. So, right. But when I was able to, you know, when I when I met right. people, I when mean, I, I was seen a people, brick. 
Everybody right. was. Right. I was a brick. I mean, in order not to be a butterfly, you got to be a brick. You got to be, in order for you to be a caterpillar, a, a butterfly. Oh, you got to be a caterpillar. But before you even a caterpillar, you got to be an egg. I was an egg, then a caterpillar. Well, and before you can be Beyonce, you got to be Esther Rose, the mama of good talent first. Let's be clear. <laughs> Let's well, be very clear. So I think it's a, you know, a transition for everybody. But like I said, when I seen representation of Janet Mock and Laverne Cox and my sister and then T.S. Madison, because I was introduced to you a, a while back, I was like, you know what? There is uh, different representation. But I'm just saying the people that I thought was they really wasn't so it was like you know what I'm saying so just think about all the other heterosexual people that's getting this representation when it's really not right. the complete thing right, right. you know what I'm but so, then you, you you guys are both from from New Orleans Amaya yeah. is from New Orleans yes. you know, Amaya is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. she's beautiful so that yes. was definitely that was definitely a, a, a a representation a representation yes. from especially right. coming from New Orleans you know she's a beautiful girl and like you like oh bitch I want to I want to give that I want to give that Amaya effect you get what I'm okay. saying so I, 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 I see and everybody else you felt were bricks right, right. <laughs> I mean I'm not shading because I'm just saying yeah bricks are bad mis misrepresentation I think so let me just say this so like when I first came out a couple of years ago they had representation of transgender women but it wasn't a lot of representation right. of transgender women mm -hmm. and although I didn't know Amaya personally mm -hmm. I got to know her more now mm -hmm. as I grew into myself mm -hmm. but she's always like supported us because she used to repost our videos and stuff like that too so, and then she's been she's also been right. you know visible so that right. you get opportunity to see that you know right. and you always need that you know visible yeah. re representation. representation yeah and right. I've always right. been visible loud loud and in color uh -huh. you know my mouth was always a fool I, right. I, I said and did what I chose to do so it and you go when you when you when you kept me like bitch you always you funny like yeah, I always funny. laugh, but I've always you know tried to make sure that I was a hundred percent who you was me because yes. there's somebody out there that's a hundred percent me too right right and that's why I feel right. like the documentary gave us the opportunity to be a hundred percent representation for Jada being trans and also me being openly gay I just right. feel like it was just an opportunity. It was my first time opening up, being vulnerable, and I took that opportunity and ran with it and was able to express myself. So That's knowing the things that I didn't know is like I know them now. So, right. I, you know, if someone was to ask me a question, I'll be able to answer that, you know what I mean, in the best of my ability. So with your brother being stubborn on your transition, were you angry with him? Um, no. <laughs> I remember once, I wasn't angry with him. I just couldn't understand, and, this is, and I want a lot of people to take this, um, this, what I'm about to say. I just couldn't understand as a gay man, why would you be upset with me for transitioning if you want to live in your truth? And so the conversation between Brandon and I was like, I remember when Brandon came out and he wasn't scared to come out to my mom, but I do particularly remember my brother that he was scared to come out to and I just couldn't understand why. But he wanted to feel accepted. And I was like, so you don't want to accept me for transitioning, but you want to be accepted two weeks no. ago. I was like, girl, you was crazy. Selfish. <laughs> like, girl, that's selfish. It's back no. to what I said. No. Girl, you can't take me. No. <laughs> selfish. But you don't know, Jay. He didn't want me to be no, the you doll. Don't, you don't know. <laughs> he couldn't take you he being the girl. Take, he couldn't take me being the girl. He didn't want you to be See, the girl. No, no, the first thing Jay was like, baby, this is what I'm doing, baby. If you don't like me, but oh, that's well, just baby. me. That's but always been me. Like, it's like, this you what have I'm to doing. give people the opportunity. Girl, no. Jayla, like, baby, they're not on board. Oh well, that's this is who I am. Oh well, that's the same talk I had with my family. I was just like, Jayla, girl, this is what it is. My name Jada. Call me Jada. That's what. That's the talk I had. I'm like, listen, I ain't got time to be around here, bitch. I'm not gonna bring home no babies and no kids. Y'all. I'm not gonna fuck my life up because y'all want my life to be right, this way. Right. I'm not gonna be over there fucking up no woman's life because a lot of y'all, y'all, a lot of y'all people. They do that. A lot of you motherfuckers is responsible for fucking up these women's life because your son wants to be your daughter. Pastor Troy. Or your. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> your, That's your, tea. Oh, yes, Pastor. <laughs> the transsexual pastor. <laughs> Your son wants to be your daughter. Your daughter wants to be your son. Or your daughter wants to be, she wants to be with her lover, her partner, whatever. Or your son wants to be with his person. Y'all be fucking up other people's lives <laughs> by not allowing these people to be themselves. Exactly. And then you sit out here and say, we are the cause of these things. We are the, we are the cause of the, because I, I hate when, when a lot of the black people, especially the fucking hotels. The who? The who? The hotels. Who is they? Uh, do you want to know them too? Well, well, you, you know, know they, they believe that we are we are a part of a, a of a of a systematic mm -hmm. decline. <laughs> 
for the black man and the black woman because you want to, you and I want to be a woman, and, right. oh, and you, you you want to be gay, mm-hmm. and the, we're part of the agenda. Right. And then we, we we when we sit on on a platform such as mine and Barcroft right. TV and all right. these places that you know to project this stuff out, we are a part of you know breaking making men and women. I'm excuse me, making men feminine. Right. Right. You know, and it's just like. How are you making these things when these this is these, these people this, who they are? Yeah, this is I can understand that. You saying the platform they feel as though you're encouraging it, but you're actually giving people a voice like like people like Jada and I. I want to say who, I, who we are. Come on, sister, say it. So you know what's so crazy to me? Like people be, like people don't have understanding until they have it to them. Right. Like, I really want to say that, and I think a lot of people we're gonna talk about the black community because that's the only community I belong to besides the LGBT community. But I feel like when it comes down to black, the black Tell family, the people don't understand until it happens to them. And I'm pretty sure everybody in their family have a gay person in their family. They claim okay. they don't. They, yeah, everybody have a gay person. Everybody they claim have a they trans don't. person. Right. Y'all be so busy worried about why Tiffany calling herself, uh, her name Timothy, but y'all calling her Tiffany, but y'all need to be worried about... I feel attacked. No, <laughs> no, 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 Okay, no, no, y'all be worried about I why... I feel like you're going somewhere. Her name Tiffany, her real name Melvin, but y'all need to be worried about Uncle Jerome who sleep with the children. That's what y'all need to be worried about. And y'all need to be worried about... what you say, Chi-Chi? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, yes. she said, Amen again. Yes. Amen. Yes. yes. Right. So y'all need to be worried about that and stop worried about why there's a transgender person or a gay person. People are people, and I think if you allow people to blossom into themselves, y'all will. It will be less com- uh, confusion in our community. I really do. Want I, do. To, I do. And feel like and, that. and, and, and that's a great point. And once again, we you are the contributing factors to the decline of the community because. You people try to withhold people from being exactly who, who they, they are for your own Better personal good. situation. You worry about what the neighbor gonna say. <laughs> you worry about what the person at the church gonna say. Right. You worry about what your mom and dad and them gonna say about your child. Bitch, and your child over here <laughs> wanna be the best them that they can be, right. and they trying to they consume this stuff. You right. done sunk this child out there in the world, sunk S U N T. You done sunk this child out there into the world. Okay. You know that embedded in them that they gonna burn hell fire. You know, and that they need a, a man and a woman supposed to be together. I'm not doing it. No. I'm not. I was not gonna live that life. I was gonna get, get to heaven, and I'm gonna say my hell's sick than hunger. <laughs> you live. <laughs> You live? Work. Oh, you gonna get that? Yeah. I was like, Lord, thank you for that Malaysian bitch you made over there, honey. Okay. Cause she definitely got a good spring. And I got okay. sold in. Okay. okay. I'm gonna say, you live? I did my part. Can I get in? You know what I mean? No, I definitely get it. Just be a visible representation. Right. I said, so after y'all got over that hump, because obviously y'all got over the hump. Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, you moved, y'all, y'all had moved from New Orleans to Atlanta. Uh-huh. That's right. And you got here. What was the first things that you did after y'all got over that hump? Did y'all go out together? Um, like, did we? Yeah, yeah, so. we did. Uh, we went out. To, we went. I actually, I remember this. I I'll let you I'm, tell it. Okay, Gary. Go ahead. <laughs> Mar- Martin Luther Queen. She okay. knows this whole. Wait, okay, did, you so, call, did you call? Did you call Martin Luther Queen? So look, so so I remember we we went out and everybody was coming up to. Uh, I think her name was Sierra at the time. Wait, um, you've been through name changes too? Just girl, I've been through right. so many names. Right. Just too. So we were just having drinks at the daiquiri factory, daiquiri. and everybody was like, "Oh my God, you look so pretty. You look so pretty." I was like, "Oh my." God. This may sound funny, but I was like, oh my God, these people think she's a girl. <laughs> I was like, I love it. I was like, I love it. So you were gagging. Yes, I was just like, wow, they really think. Yeah. I was like, they really oh, think you're a girl, Jada. You know, at the end. And then I just saw how happy she was. And I was like, you know what, at the end of the day, like I said, we, we come from New Orleans where people already bash you, tell you who you can't be and all that. So I was like, you know what, this is the first time in my life I've really seen her happy. So if you're happy, I'm happy. You know what I mean? It's nothing to be, like, sad about. Aww. So that's how we turned it around. I just saw her being happy. I was like, you know what? I don't want to be the person to take this joy away from you. Right. You know what I mean? Because you have to deal with other people anyway. So right. let. So you did know. you secretly want them to say, oh, my God, you look like a straight man? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and she should have tapped me. Oh my God, you think you're straight? <laughs> you know, to be so, to be honest, I remember that night I had long black hair. No, I just no. wanted to get past that home so bad that I allowed him to say whatever he wanted to say. I just wanted to just be free, and I, I let him live. Of course, he was living, but I just wanted to get over that hump because it was so much tension in the house, and it was just like it was just too much, and I just couldn't. I just was like, oh, I just hope he hurry up and get over it. You know. Yeah. Now, let's get down to what talking about getting over things. 
So I've asked you mm -hmm. about your sexual endeavors and things mm -hmm. like that. You know, what you like, what's your attraction. Mm -hmm. I want to know about you, your attractions. Okay. Like, because you were always the girl. Right. Tell the truth. But you told me earlier before the program started that you are pansexual. I am. I want you to break pansexual down for me. Okay. At, like a six-year-old. Oh. <laughs> pansexual. So, pan, um, so pansexual is basically like when you're attracted to people not based on their gender or their gender identity or like, um, yeah, like basically their gender identity. Oh. They got me nervous. <laughs> yeah, I want to know. But I mean, just you know? basically attracted to people not because of their gender Come identity. Well, okay, personality. Yeah. Okay, so I thought pansexual. Was just licking the pan. I told him, the day I picked up a he pan. Said, I said, this is best section. I told her licking the pan, but then she broke it down. And I was like, she was like, you better not Brand make a joke out of it. But I said I would anyway. So yeah. there it is. So, you, so, you, so you're just gay. Yeah, I'm a gay male. I'm attracted to... Um, but you've had your peen inside of a, of a woman. Yes, I dated women before. Yeah, going on. So you've been I'm not in, lying. You, so you've been inside of a woman. Yes. Yeah, I dated women all the way up till I was maybe about... 21. And then that one kiss got your dick hard for me. Not the one kiss. And I, you were done. No, I, no, I met this guy. I met this guy. He was the number six combo. <laughs> yeah, the number six combo. I met this guy and we hit it off. And then that's you know. So are you away. are you the top or? I am the top. <laughs> I'm really gonna ask you that. No, I am the top. I'm a top. I mean, you do give I'm me like this top. You do. You do give me. You, very, you do give me this dominant. I'm very aggressive. You do give me. I am this. very aggressive. So, by you giving me this uh -huh. dominant energy, because I, I, I felt like you gave. It came. I, I read your energy, especially the part when you said that you know you. I can't understand why the fuck you want to be like this. Blah, 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 right. You know, and you you in, in the house is not speaking. I'm like. Why are you trying Stay to be so at this girl? Like, no, I think when it comes down to guys, I usually date uh, masculine guys. Um, usually successful guys, usually who have things going for themselves. I'm one of those type of guys. I'm always busy. So you are mask for mask. Not mask for mask. Um, no, hold on. It's because I have some things to talk no. about that mask for mask. <laughs> you do. I mask. usually do date masculine men. But I mean, if I've dated feminine men too, and if you know, as long as you embrace yourself and you're true to who you are, tell this man the truth. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was. Michael Jackson was. Tell the truth. So no, is there someone guy. named I, Michael Jackson? I dated this guy. He was really he pretty. Was. He looked like Michael Prince Jackson. and Michael Jackson at the same time. So uh, you know, me and my cousins and stuff, we would just call him Michael Jackson. He was serious. But, but he was no, he was. <laughs> So he was, he was, was a so, so basically, man. he was almost a trend. Right. <laughs> oh! Now let's get into that. Nah, let's get into that. <laughs> no, he wasn't. 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 Let's dabble into that. Michael Jackson. So, you know, that was the first time I dated a feminine guy. It was pretty cool. But I usually date masculine guys. He dibbles and dabbles. Oh. And dabbles. Well, and I, my guy, you're so funny. I have this theory. Michael What's Jackson. What's that? That. When mask for mask <laughs> seeks mask for mask, there's a feminine trait in some one of those masks because a you man, a, a, a woman always seeks masculine traits <laughs> from a man. <laughs> Wait, I'm weak. <sighs> Do you, you feel like that you have any feet fem, feminine traits? Feminine, yes, indeed. In you, like yeah. You, of course, I'm a gay man. Of course, I have feminine traits. I'm not walking around and be like, yeah, I'm masculine. You hear me? Because I'll no. be like, Brandon's not. Because guy. you know what? To be, <laughs> no, but to be nerves. honest, I'm really one of those type of people. I would say I'm really myself. So if, if I want to be masculine and I'm doing something, I'm being masculine, that's cool. If I'm feminine and I'm having a good time with my friends, I don't mind that. You know what I mean? So you, I, you, 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 shut up. So you, that. no, no, I don't flip five, but who I am is who I am and I love who I am. Okay. So it don't matter. I don't got to right. walk around and be saying, don't be feminine around me because my family ain't going to like that. Okay. I mean, if I like you and I'm attracted to you, of course I'm going to have to bring you around my so family. So he does fall under the fuck me sis category tree, Chi Chi. No, no, no. no. You know what? <laughs> fuck me sis. <laughs> Okay, because we talk about the fuck me sis yeah. with Chi Chi, because Chi Chi was having an inter interaction, a sexual interaction. Mm -hmm. They were both playing masculine. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. And, well, they mm -hmm. were both playing masculine, and <laughs> Chi Chi was using his piece on the on the boy. Uh -huh. And as he got, as he deviled into the third layer of the boy's inside, uh -huh. <laughs> the boy turned around and said, "Fuck me sis." Oh no! Work. 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 Work
No, 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 no. I don't do that type. No, we, no. I, yeah. no, I get it. Though. Yeah, Gigi, get so your my beat. talking in the bedroom ain't like. So if a boy, so if you hitting the boy from the back and he spit around and say fuck me, sis, does he gotta go? Um, I'm I'm not into that. You're I'm usually to like be. talking to like you to like be. that baby. I'm usually the talking, so I'm like you like that baby. Uh, you know what I mean? That's usually my thing. Do you like the baby? But by you being pansexual, yeah. they turn around and say fuck me, sis. You gonna tear them up? Um, well, I don't be topping people, so I'm not a top. I leave the. She lied. She lied. I'll let you answer this. I ain't talked nobody in weeks, girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she lied. She lied. Okay, so you're you, so I'm enjoying this. So you, so pansexual is you attracted to? Oh, she did say come oh, on. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm I, didn't know you was, I was trying to grab the arm of the chair. We can use this moment to fix your hair. You know. I was trying to let pan, me let me because I was trying. Listen, pan, I didn't want your brother to think that I was trying to grab the meat. Uh, <laughs> That's Chi Chi job. <laughs> <laughs> Work Chi Chi. Right. So pansexual is attraction to pots. Pans, stop dolls, doing, stop saying dishes. Hey, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why you. I told you that the other day. So, so it, it attra- it's attraction to that. And so basically, you could be attracted to a cisgender person. You could be attracted to a trans, another transgender. You could be attracted to. Um, oh, why are you looking at? Uh, what is it? Uh, 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 trans man. Intersex, intersex, trans man, and, and so just it's it's it's, it's the vibe for you. And well, I will. I will say I'm picky. One and then two. I, like I, I have a preference. Everybody has a preference. Oh. Oh, okay, let's get down to preferences. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I do. Oh, do you like men? Yes, I love men. Do you like feminine men? I've dated feminine men before. But you don't use your. Do you still? Have, oh, oh, should should I not ask that? Since the ex. Okay. Have you had sexual reassignment surgery? No, I have not. Okay, so you still have your your your, your unit like I do. Okay, Miss Beverly. You have Beverly. Right. Uh, <laughs> this is Joan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you, so you don't, you don't, you don't perform, you don't talk. Um. So no, that's not really my thing, mm. and I don't want to sound like superficial on camera. But like, say, fancy if I was probably dating someone and they preferred me to do something like that, then that would be another situation. But that's that's just not my first go-to. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna be honest here on the spotlight session. Okay. I enjoy sexual endeavors with men. However, I don't like being forced. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I didn't. I, my I, my design by nature is is woman. Right. And I don't enjoy using. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, no, excuse me. I, <clears throat> when I used to be a working girl, Joan was Joan was definitely. The corn. She was she was the, she was the starring actress. Of course. Honey. So for me, it was work. In my personal life, do I enjoy? Topping men? No. Will I top a man, bitch, if the gin and juice start hit me? <laughs> yes. You feel me? Will I see that man as my husband or my dude? No. No. It'll be some freak shit. It'll be the same thing. Yeah, it'll, it'll be some freak right. shit, and then we'll, we're gone about right. our, all, all okay, about our business. business. You feel me? Because, and you just know. So you like to get slammed? Bitch. Don't. Wow. Dig me like a grave, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, lay oh, me no. six feet. Okay. Yeah. So you know that's because I'm. A, I just feel like you know, but mm-hmm. he, he just, but I will perform all seven wonders. Believe it, mm-hmm. all okay. of them I will perform them all. But am I what? What am Do I you, gifted in? Right. Mm-hmm. Getting slammed. Uh, yes, but I'm also gifted in decision, sending them to the great beyond <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and bringing them back. Okay. Uh, you know? <laughs> Yeah. But you know, but for me, you know, I, I ask these sexual questions just to see the differences in be- in between you both, and uh-huh. you just you are you're free. Yeah, you kind of reserved. Me? Yes. Every, I know that's the thing. You know, I know I can't regret no, really. I'm telling the truth. No. <laughs> oh, the spirit told me that too. But okay. you know, but in his face, no, no, no. I really, I really am a reserved type of guy. I really, I'm chill, very chill, <laughs> laid back. Type of guy. Um, I'm actually not uh, currently dating anyone at the moment. So, well, anybody listen, who's gonna this, this, well, listen <laughs> people, if you're out there, the, their ads are definitely gonna be at the bottom. No, I do actually want to date a lot more this I year. I told him that this year because yeah, because I'm 29 and I want I'm 30. So you're be, single. I am single. I'm casually dating. Oh, okay. Now I need you to break that down for me. Casual dating. Oh, because oh, <laughs> I'm like the people out there. Like, are oh, you ready? I'm looking. So, 
Um, I'm just currently dating. I'm having fun. I've been in two relationships before. At and the I'm, same time? No, not no, okay. not at the same time. But I've been in two relationships before, and I'm just at a point <laughs> where I know what I want, and I'm not just going to settle for anything, so I'm casually dating. And you know I'm wearing my options, of course. Are you sexually yeah. active in these casual dates? T.S. Yes, man, I haven't had sex since August. Oh, she learned, she learned. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I haven't had sex since August. Once again, like I said earlier in the program, you do know that oral sex is. <laughs> it sex. hasn't been. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been any of that. You haven't had you any munch cake. No. Okay, all right, I get it. So, all right, so we we we, we passed this stuff. You know, y'all y'all are in this good space, mm -hmm. and you know you got you've gotten this. Uh, uh, the platform, like how did how did the first big platform reach out to you guys? Where did they see? They, they, they okay. saw you on social media. Um, it was really funny. I actually Jada moved to New York City. Um, what the hell you? Yeah, got? we both. We yeah, both, we just moved back. Yeah, we just moved what back. I thought we've been we around the world. Around. We've been around the world. To make a long story short, I was coming to New York to uh, visit Jada and to find an apartment, and we were on Facebook Live, and these people just came in on our live and was like, "Oh my God, you guys were so funny." We're gonna hit you guys up tomorrow to do a story about you. But I really, I wasn't living in New York City at the time, so we were having lunch in Times Square, mm -hmm. and that's when they called us from London. Yeah, and it was like we're gonna do a story about you guys. And we're gonna fly up there to come see y'all. And they came the next day. It was crazy. Oh, I baby, this is. They was ready. Yeah. Well, they, cause they, especially when you find interest in stuff like right. this is yeah. a very interesting story. So Barcroft TV was, uh, they found you. Uh -huh. And y'all was, yeah, they flew in the next day. Right. And we just started filming. I wasn't even unpacking my clothes in New York cause I had moved to New York. Mm -hmm. And um, I just got put on some clothes and it was crazy cause we wore the identical outfits, but we didn't discuss the outfits. So she had on gray boots, I had on gray boots. She had on burgundy, I had on burgundy. Oh my gosh, so the connect, yes, y'all connection yes. is... And we lived in two different parts of New York, so we didn't get dressed together at all. We just right. got dressed and met up, and we had on the exact same outfit. I, so I, I, that is one of the questions that I wanted to ask, that I, I should have asked earlier. So even though she's transitioned, and y'all, you were, you, is the connection... Yes. One time, it was about a month ago, she had took a hormone shot and she put it in her right hip. And you felt it. Let me tell you. And I was driving and I was like, oh my God, my hip hurts so bad. It was hurting so bad, it was it thriving. Was and uh, I wasn't even in Georgia, I was in New Orleans. And my friend was like, what's wrong? I was like, damn, my hip, it just started hurting all of a sudden. And it just kept hurting the whole day. So then I finally called, I was like, you know, what happened? She was like, oh, I took a hormone shot. It started bleeding my right side of my thigh. And I was like, oh, and my friend heard it. And she was like, oh, did that really happen? I was like, yes, yeah. so I was like 400 miles away, but I felt it. And like my hip started hurting. So you felt it and you feel her when, do, do you feel him when he's sad? He's yeah, because I, I know when Brandon said, oh, I can know when Brandon something bothers him if he's not like talking about it. Because I like going this from his energy kind of tells it a lot. Just like you knew he had to use the bathroom before we started taping. Yeah, I went to the bathroom and I was like, make sure you go to the bathroom before. He was like, Jada, I don't got to use the bathroom. And, and then, then as soon as I came downstairs, boom, he went to the bathroom. bathroom. I said, I knew you had to go to the bathroom. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's so crazy. So the connection is very strong, and yeah. you guys are together and 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 locked in with each other yeah. till the end. Yeah, Jade and I, we're really special. We even have a a, a twin language. Right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah I watch that language. Please, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can speak a little bit. You do, Jade, and I'll translate. Um, gango geki kagi 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 I'm so glad to be here today to meet T.S. Madison. Oh my God! It's yeah. you put G in front of everything. Yeah. Yeah. So he said we bought king cake and barbecue shrimp. Oh yeah, we gonna do that. Yeah. Oh, we gonna do so, that. Yeah. So we we've been doing this since we were like nine years old. We and we were sitting. This I guess it's our messy moment. Come so on, we let's were, do we it. were we would sit here and talk about. Everybody in New Orleans, everybody who will walk past, our family, I'm everything like, that's going on in the inside, we will be sitting on the porch having a full conversation. Everybody's like, what are they talking about? We used to be nine years old just talking about the Gossip whole neighborhood, man. gossiping about everybody, but, you know, in our own little language. So, we, you know, we pretty much been connected. Since I see kids. that. And, you know, for me, and I don't want to bring this into, bring a down moment <laughs> in here, mm -hmm. but if something were to happen to either one of you, mm -hmm. it would be devastating. Yeah, I feel like it's like we're a package. It's like you can't, we come together. Like, you right. can't have one without the other. Y'all yeah. like the Twix. Yeah, you can't have one without the can't other. can't have right. one without the other. It's one. really not a two for one, though, but you know what I mean? You can't well, have one. Well, it depends on her because I believe she has the higher fee. <laughs> right, <boy>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, we're like a two for one, and we're special. And we're here, we're here in Atlanta. Um, Jada loves to cook. 
I love to bake. Well, well, speaking of that, Jada loves to cook and you love to bake. So you guys have merged together on a project, on a catering project. Yes. And you, you've opened up your own business and it's yes, called, called What, what You're, you're cooking, cooking, Baby. Yay. Hey. Yes. It's called What, what You're, you're cooking, cooking, Baby. Yeah, so Jada and I started our first company. We lived in New York, like we said. And everything really was expensive growing up, you know, living in New York just last year. Right. And I was working and I had like $20. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to make some edibles. And I did, and I, I did it the next day, and I made $200 the next day. Then I went to work. Wait. And, yes. <laughs> Edibles as in? Yes. Uh, so the name of my company is called Po' Boy Treats, and I'm Po' Boy, and I'm originally from New Orleans. Funny name. I always thought I would own a Po' Boy stand, but I was working in New York, and I had $20, and my cousin from New Orleans was there, and she had a food stamp card. And I said, cousin, can you please go to the store? And we don't want to have stuff. any incriminating things over here. The food stamp card was legal. Yes. <laughs> So I told my cousin, I said, if you go to the store and buy, you know, the stuff, I'm going to make some edibles. So the next day I went to work, made $200. I went back to work, made $400 because I worked at this big restaurant. Then the next week I went and made $900 and I was able to quit my job. And I never had to work for anyone ever And you have contemplated about that. And you've been so making you... edibles ever since. Ever since uh, New Year's Eve, December 30, 31st, 2018. So that's the last day I worked for somebody. So when was the last day you worked for somebody? So I actually found a job here. So I actually do catering part time. And so right now we're saving up for a food trip. And the name of my business, well, the name of the business, like we say it together, is uh, What You're Cooking Baby. And so I do most of the cooking because yeah. I'm a really good cook and you'll see that today. Oh, I'm, I'm about to do that. Yes. Now, before we get into this last segment of the show where I can taste your food, we can mm -hmm. there was one thing that I forgot that I wanted to touch on. Mm -hmm. On the Barcroft TV interview, mm -hmm. you guys went into the home of other transitioning children. Right? Yes. This is the biggest question that I, I I needed to save to the end before we go into a big happy place, because <laughs> I'm really ha ready to eat the stuff that you brought me. Bring in the butter knife. I watch, and on this episode, you guys went into the home of another t twins, mm -hmm. right? Right. And there was also one was a trans, trans woman, and the, 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 the state went to stay a boy. Right. They said something very special for me at the end. It, it, he said. I almost forgot that I had a brother. I've, I feel like I've always had a sister. Yeah. Is does that ring true? Yes. Okay. So I'm not gonna go deep, but no I deep. know. I remember. Like I, okay. Right. <laughs> I never feet. forget when Jada was just little. Jada would walk around our house and oh um like a little comfortable a comforter, and she would wrap it around like a Cinderella dress. Like and a my woman, honey. And my mom was like. Bitch, take that fucking shit off! <laughs> You're not a fucking Cinderella! You're not a princess! And I used to be like, you know, like, why would she, you know, walk around? And then one time, I remember she had stuffed her brow with tissue. And growing up, I know this one gonna resonate with you, and this is so weird. But growing up in New Orleans, we would go places. As children, people would be like, oh, that's the boy twin, that's the girl twin. We would be like six years old. And people would label me as the boy twin. And, and her as the girl. But we both. We're boys. Yeah, so it was so confused. I was like, why would they think you're a girl? Like, doesn't make sense. We both look, you know. So as time went on, I was just like, everything started ringing a bell. Everything. Literally all all those old feelings and stuff. Like, you the boy twin, girl twin. I was like, oh, it wow. Was, People was, saw us it way was, before us. It was all laid out in front of yes, you. Yes. I was right. like, wow. The whole world saw this way before we did. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Jada, that segment kind of like it stung me a little okay it stung me a little because they were nine years old mm -hmm. that's funny i'm very i'm very on the fence with transitioning okay. at mm -hmm. at seven eight mm -hmm. nine mm -hmm. i'm i'm on the fence and i'm okay. a trans i'm a trans woman okay because just just like I said earlier in the in the in the program, I saw mm -hmm. the client right. game and that and I and that was that right. was confirmation for me. Right. You're nine. Mm -hmm. You're seven. Mm -hmm. What was what is the confirmation? Like what? Like how do you know this is a fee like? Even though we know that we're different, because you knew you were different. Right. You knew you were yes. different. You didn't know exactly that you were a woman mm -hmm. right. until you had that. That that you knew it was something, something. going on, right. mm -hmm. but that visual confirmation with that movie, girl like me, right? Right. Mm -hmm. It's right. like this is it. Right. Mm -hmm. 
nine years old. So, so um, honestly, um, how do I want to break this down? Yeah, please. Okay. Because it, because for me, it was I, a lot for us too. Because you know they every, reached out to us through Facebook. So we so, but they, but had they already had she already been yes. in the Yes. So so right. I'll kind of tell you about her. So her energy is very feminine. Right. And you can tell that it's coming from like a genuine place. It's almost hard to believe that she's trans, honestly. And I was there and I visit her very often too, off camera too. And so she's a very feminine little girl. Also, what I want to say is evolution. And if that's the right word that I'm looking mm-hmm. for, you know, it's a different time. We're in a different era. Just like when, you know, you were born in the mm-hmm. 70s mm-hmm. and then you had confirmation, uh, confirmation, excuse me, of the, the crying game. Yes. And then I was born in the 90s and then I had uh, confirmation from a girl like me. So me, and she said that her confirmation was well, from Jazz, YouTube Jazz and Jazz Jennings. And, you know, Jazz Jennings transition at a very early yes, age. Yes, I did yeah. see that. I did watch that. And so I think people just kind of become uh, inspired over time. Yeah. Cause but I, that I, is a young age. But yes. like, like Jada said, when we went over there, it was like basically seeing our lives in other people. So like Jada said, like you got feminine energy from uh, Natasha and also she really represented for the trans community. She seemed, really seemed as if that's really something she really wanted. Even though it was at an early age, also, but it seemed like that's something she really wanted. Her parents wanted, and she was getting kicked out of school, and it was I, a lot. I mean, I get it because you know this, 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 this. It's a something in you. It's a right. something right. Mm-hmm. when you're different like that. It right. is a something, but it, it's just for me. And I'm, I, I'm trying to not project my feelings about it to people out there. I just want to have an opinion on it. Mm-hmm. I get afraid around seven, eight, nine years right. old because right. it's just like, girl, you haven't experienced. You really have not really, ex- you really don't know right. nothing yet. And then the parents start giving them hormone blockers. Right. Right. I mean, testosterone right. blockers and hormone. And it's just like, oh my God. Like, oh, like for me, that's frightening for me. I right. mean, well, it's, I would say it's frightening because even at our age, it's still frightening, you know? I do feel like at, when you at a teenage Going into when you're an adolescent, teenager, going into a mature adult, like you kind of like feel your noodle. Yeah, you you know right. you kind of like swerved in, and you've been in school, you've been around other children. Yeah, right. But Girl, she is young. Seven, eight, nine. I don't. I. Did she stay on the military base too? Oh my God. Yeah. But they're very accepting because yeah. I went to the um the military run in New Jersey for New York Jersey Pride and they was like all supporting us. So it's kinda different. Yeah, she lived in a different time. Yeah, a it's different, a different era. Yeah, it is a different time and a different era. And she's also a different race. And yes. Age. Yes. Yes. But we were able to identify yes. her. Yeah, she's a different race. You know what I mean? Yes. So that's different when you're a different race. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hey, you had done What's that? your mama name? Tracy. Tracy and Mary. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, my mama. How you yeah. knew you was a girl at seven? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I, no, no. Oh, no. Uh, How you, you know you, who told? Bitch, come here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you sound like Even mama. though that might not be a good way, or you, because you'll never be able to beat it out of a child. You'll never oh, be able awful. to, you will never be able to yell it out. You'll never be able to punish it out. Right. Right. But it, I just feel like it has to have a nurture. It has to have nurturing. Right, right. In some type of way. I, I would say, um, I don't really know how to say this. I would just say that I hope that she gets the great education yeah. that she needs to mm-hmm. become the, the best person she could be. Mm-hmm. Because that's what it's about. That's what, what it's all day. about at the end of the day. Just right. getting that, that education. education and getting that push and getting that support from people, your peers and at first, she was getting bullied, and now people at her school accept it. And of course, her uh, bro- her brother he protects her and stuff like that. So she's getting same that, way, y'all. yeah, same. That's why it was easy for us to identify oh. because I was like, you know what? And they reached out to us doing a Facebook message. And like I said, we were just opening up about ourselves. So yeah, I'm yeah. praying. I'm praying for y'all, mm-hmm. and I'm praying for their family. And, and, and you know, I'm praying that everything works, works out. out for them. Right. And you know, and I just hope at the end that she knows that this is what she wants. To right. really, really do, do. right? Because right. there's no, you there's know, no, no turning, turning back. No it's turning like back. Point, always a point. That's it. Yes. Boom. Ooh. All right. So we don't got down to the end of the show, honey. Okay. We gonna do this for boy trees. What you cooking, baby? So let me tell you all about it. You can bring this over right, here. Come on. This here. is a New Orleans King Cake. Hey. 
Wait, hey. baby, get into this. Get into it. Wait, don't flip the wait. camera. Oh, let me, wait. Get into that. You gotta flip. Ooh. <laughs> Hold on. Chi Chi done brought me this big ass butcher's knife. Chi Chi, what's up with the wine? Girl. There you go. Yes, look at it. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Got the Mardi Gras mask, so let me tell you about it. So we grew up in New Orleans eating king cakes, and right here you get a plastic baby. So whoever gets the baby, we usually traditionally throws it in the middle. But whoever gets the baby has to bring the next king cake to the next uh, event. But I used to work at a king cake uh, place in New Orleans, and I decided one day to start making king cakes. I posted the video on social media. It made it to 100,000 views within a day, mm -hmm. and I started making king cakes the very next day. So, so how yeah. do you, you, you cut just it, bust it in the middle? Baby, bust it, bust it open. Oh, you know how I go. Baby. <laughs> so you, usually everybody pick their favorite color in New Orleans. Mine will be the yellow piece. Well, and this, mine always the purple. It's See? So, and I'm and going the purple for purple for royalty. Royalty, royalty baby. Royalty. Bust that Dana. open and get this king cake. Let me see. Baby, watch it's going to melt in your mouth. Wait, is, what kind of bread is it? Babe, it's, it's dough. It's dough? Yeah. It looks good, too. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, <laughs> she's so funny. Mm. What does it taste like? T.S. Wow, well, yeah! You're doing the second line. Oh, bop, titty, titty, bop, 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 move your titty, titty, move, move, but move, move, shake it, titty, titty, shake, 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 drop, titty, titty, drop, drop, to drop, drop, move it all around, shake it all around, do it all around, shake it all around. Yes, baby. Yes, the king can make your bop, titty, and move it a little bit. You like it? Yeah. Now, y'all know I got pre diabetes, girl. I ain't got time for the Baby, this is a king cake. They don't got nothing to do with it. It's <laughs> different. I know it's different. Baby, I made that from by scratch this morning just mm. for you. Mm. For TS. B. TS. As the TS thanks you so much. Yes, that's for TS. Mm. Yes, that's a king cake. New Orleans. Chi Chi, don't be looking at me like that, girl. They've been making it. It's T. They've been making this king cake since the 12th century. They right? brought this for me. I already had some. Not yeah, yeah. Well, TS, before I leave, I might want a piece. <laughs> Go ahead, share with your little sister. Uh, oh, you want a piece? I'm gonna eat it off camera. I don't want the children to see me dig I want to keep it. <laughs> Overindulging. Mm. Pain. Mm. Oh, so yes, that's your whole Mardi Gras setup. I got you. Oh, my you. God. Pobo, I got you. Thank so you. once, so once, this is my slogan. So once you eat something I have, I always say, Pobo, I got you, baby. Mm. And you always say, Pobo, I got me. Boy, what got me, baby? Yes, boy, boy got you. <laughs> oh, my God. Chichi, do not drop this. I can't get it, baby. Do not. Big girl. Yes. Bitch. Yes. What? Baby, that's fresh. So I brought you some of my famous barbecue shrimp. Barbecue shrimp. And mussels. And I brought you some. And mussels. Okay. And I brought you some French bread to go along with it. So tell me, instruct me, how, how does this go? Instruct me. So barbecue shrimp is basically barbecue flavoring. Why do y'all keep the head on it? Yeah, because that's how you do it, to keep the flavor. Because they give you the flavor. And so, you know, you pull and suck. You know how I go. Pull it out, suck it. You know, see? Pull that shrimp back. <laughs> pull that meat back. And so barbecue shrimp is one of New Orleans' famous dishes. And take what? your time, sister. Girl, bust that bread yeah, open. Do yeah. sister, take help your sister out. Bust that bread open. Oh, so yes. this Jada, fam I can say this Jada famous. <laughs> It's my favorite dish to make. Yes, Jada can whip it off. But the barbecue shrimp is way different from the regular shrimp in New Orleans. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Here you go with your piece of red tea. See that? See, I don't got time for all this. Y'all don't like the detail. No, but the, the barbecue shrimp, you, you have You're to. You're supposed to keep it on there. Yeah, to keep mm. the flavor. Why you just suck that, mama? Mm. Ooh. Don't be scared. You got to fuck things. Ain't put dip it on in there. <laughs> I know you lie. Yeah. Mm, what you cooking, this. baby? Mm, is this, mm. is this good? The Jada, muscles is cheap. Mm. Jada got you right. Mm, Jada got me right, baby. Mm. Oh, I forgot. The we twins. Still, are... We still taping? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The, the twins gonna get you right. Mm. Mm. So Jada the cook and I'm the baker. Mm. I want to suck that so bad, but girl, I don't need to know. I'm gonna get the clip from the room. Okay, let me get some of this muscle. Take your time, sister. <clears throat> Dig in, T.S. Mm. The muscles be tea. Mm. Nobody make better muscles than my twin. So how you, you? You just you suck the. I mean the thing right yeah, there. Yeah, you suck it, sister. You know how I go. You didn't did this before. Don't tell nobody about it. You you didn't did this before, sister. Yeah. Suck it. This is really good. Get get your pizza. Mm. Mm. Who got you, baby? Baby, poor boy. Okay. <laughs> poor boy got me, baby. Okay. 
Oh Jada Blake Beauty did you right? Yes, she did. Okay. Mmm. Yes, Jada. Let the does. people know, baby, you are eating barbecue shrimp mm. and black muscle with a barbecue seasoning straight from out New Orleans, mm. made by the one and only. My God, today. Oh, yeah, Jada gonna get you right. God, forgive me, because I know I ain't supposed to be eating no shellfish, honey, because I'm trying to get my soul right with the Father. <laughs> That's all right, sister. Get you a piece. God know your whole <laughs> <laughs> And he really know your stomach. Oh, you yes, he, 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 he know you, sir. Yes, so he he know. OP, baby. My sister's mm. double dipping, mm. baby. That's what real, enjoy real it. New Orleans, mm. real mm. project, mm. real downtown mm. New Orleans Creole cuisine. What you cooking, baby? Mm. So this summer, we're going to be opening up a food truck right here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And that's some of the little bit of sample things that we're going to be having. Oh, my God. It's so good. And guess what, T.S. Madison? Mm. I made gumbo. New, real New Orleans, Orleans gumbo. gumbo. You brought it? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm cooking it next week, and if you oh, really want yeah. it, I can bring it to you. February no, you 14, seafood gumbo in New Orleans. My gumbo is to die for tears, man. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, y'all can't have none of this, but you can get some from them specifically by visiting what? You poor boy treats on and Instagram. What's your, cook, what's your cooking baby, baby. on Instagram? Mm -hmm. And you can also contact me for all your catering needs at What's Your Cooking Baby. But I am Jada Black Beauty, of course. Gosh, I want to fuck this up. Yes, we we, we knew you would love to. Oh, believe it. That's why we got you. I want to say thank you guys both, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being a guest here tonight, sharing your story, sharing your delicious treats, your of delicious course. gifts with me. We got you, T.S. These are his gifts. We got you, T.S. Thank you so much. You guys are always welcome here. Anytime you have any updates on anything, Send it over to me. I run it through my show. And I love you. Yeah, we love I you. I love you. Oh, and I'm so glad we came. I love you, baby. Girl, that shit smells so good. Girl, Girl I want to fuck this. I'm mad that you ain't making enough for us. Oh, my God. You ain't making enough for us. Let's stop it. Let's be careful. <laughs> Let's let see get up. Please yeah, let get me have this. Please get let me have this all piece. by myself. Get to a piece. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a spotlight session with T.S. Mash, and we hope you enjoy. Please follow these beautiful beautiful people oh it got you sis it did it's about to get me again okay. i love you and i'll see you guys next week bye, bye.